Okay, so this is a video about my gaming desktop. I don't desktop very often, but when I do, it's in this thing. It's the Loki Ghost S1. I featured this case before in a video or two. It's my favorite case. It's the smallest like ITX case that you can get out there that still has a nice shape. It's got an 8.2 liter volume. Uh, that's like the, some people often question what, why I use volume for my cases. Like it's just the size of it, how big it is. 8.2 liters is the volume, but smaller cases than this, I mean, there are smaller cases than this, often have like ugly shapes and stuff. I really like the design and shape of this thing. So this is the one that I use. Now, the reason why I even made this video was because Nvidia launched some new cards, particularly the RTX 2080 Super. I was contemplating running the Super instead of the 2080 Ti. I know that the Ti is more powerful. It's what I've been running in this thing for the past few months, but I thought I would try the Super because I was assuming this would use less power than the 2080 Ti. And this is an issue I've had in this particular case because it's so small and because it's so cramped, I was hoping that the 2080 Super would be a better option for this particular build. Turns out it isn't. The 2080 Ti has almost identical thermals in terms of like case thermals to the 2080 Super, which is a little bit unfortunate. It's strange though, right? Like the Super uses a six pin and an eight pin power connector, but the 2080 Ti uses two eight pins. You would assume that there's just like less power draw, but Surprisingly very similar between the two. Okay, in this case, we have the video card up front, 2080 Ti, or kind of on the side. And on the other side, I will reveal, I mean, this case is one of my favorite cases because of how easy it is to build into for a super tiny case. Okay, we have the Noctua L12 heatsink. It almost feels like they built this case around the use of this heatsink. It's like custom fit to this whole shape and size. Like there's like a millimeter of space between the heatsink and the grill on the side. But I've changed the fan in there. It used to run a Noctua fan that came with the heatsink. I've swapped it out for something that's a little bit louder, but much more powerful. It's the Cooler Master fan. I think it's the Blade Master. It's not as quiet as the stock fan, but because I'm cooling a pretty powerful CPU in here, I had to use it. Okay, so the CPU in here is the 9900K from Intel. It is an eight core CPU and I'm able to overclock this thing to around 4.8 gigahertz on all cores, but the system does get pretty hot. Uh, it's running 32 gigs of RAM made by G-Skill and it's running a 600 watt power supply from Corsair, it's the SF600. Now back to the GPU. So this system is running the 2080 Ti. Like I said, like 400 times this video already, I really wanted this card to work. It's just that the performance that the Super was giving was not nearly as high as I was hoping. For the games that I play, I was getting like a 7% bump in performance compared to the regular 2080, which is still really far away from what the 2080 Ti was pushing out. Plus, the thermal performance was identical to the Ti which is unfortunate. I still think that this card has a place, like a lot of people rip on the Super for like, why does it exist? It's a terrible card. It isn't like if you were out in the market looking for an RTX 2080 anyways, this is just like a bonus upgrade in terms of performance. I still think Nvidia could and should have bumped this thing a little bit better than what it is, but that's what we have. Okay. Uh, I'm running two drives in here. They're both NVMEs. One's a Samsung 970, the other is a Toshiba, and everything's mounted onto an Asus i370 ITX motherboard. So that's that. If you're interested in building a case like this, uh, two kind of issues. Number one, this case is quite difficult to get right now. I know they ran off a Kickstarter, but it's difficult to buy this case right now. Secondly, because of the orientation of the motherboard, I had to extend the cables from the power switch. It's just a little bit of an annoyance, but this case overall, I absolutely love it. I've tried so many small ITX cases. I know some people don't care about case sizes, but I'm a big fan of small cases. I've tried the N case M1, the Dan case A4, this is my favorite one, Loki Ghost S1. It holds everything I need quite nicely and it still has very respectable thermals for a case of this size. Okay, moving on to other components that I have in my setup. The keyboard that I use right now, I showed this a bunch of times, it's the Mass Drop Control Keyboard. This is a keyboard that I liked right away when I first used it and it's grown on me even more over time. I love the design aesthetic of it. I love the lighting. I really like the switches. Like you can swap out the switches without any kind of soldering. If you want to, you can just replace all the switches. It's not cheap obviously, but it can be done without too much hassle. And it's just a really nice keyboard. I did a video on this thing called the perfect gaming keyboard or something like that. And I really think that holds true. Like it's, it's my favorite keyboard right now. There is another keyboard on the market that should be coming out soon made by Razer. It's like the Mercury White Black Widow Lite. And I think that keyboard could look really good with this setup. 
if this thing wasn't opened up like this, but I think that keyboard does look nice. I would consider swapping this thing out for that just on aesthetics alone, assuming the switches feel nice on it. Okay, uh, the mouse. This is the last thing. Actually, no, there's a display, but the mouse that I use, I've showed this before, it's the G Pro from Logitech. It's wireless, it has an excellent sensor, it's got good battery life, it's got clean design aesthetic. I do wish it came in other colors other than black, like a gray or even a white. Maybe not white, that would get pretty dank quickly, but a gray would be hype. Now, if you've ever wondered, does a wireless mouse have the same performance as a wired mouse? It totally does, if you have a good quality wireless mouse, and the G Pro is on point. Okay, the last piece of this whole setup is the display. I'm running the 4K X27 from Acer. It is a very nice looking display. I've had it for about 10 months at this point. 4K, 144 hertz, excellent color accuracy. My only issue with it, and it's such a small one, but I feel like if you're interested in that device, you should know about this. It has an internal fan that gets reasonably loud if you play for an extended period of time. For me, it kicks in around like the 30, maybe 40 minute mark. It's quiet and completely silent before that, but when it kicks in, it is audible. And for audio, I use these. It's not a gaming headset, sort of disappoint. These are the H7 from B&O. These are wireless headphones. It does have a mic, so you can use it for chat and stuff like that. These work wonderfully for wireless connections with gaming. I mean, there's obviously gaming dedicated headsets that would probably be better, but I like the look of them. Keeps the setup clean, minimal wires. There you have it. Okay, that is my gaming setup that I use when I have a desktop. This is it. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. See you guys next time.